let's give initial thrust to solving this paper by answering question number one a bus moves from rest with a constant acceleration for 12 seconds so u is zero when it starts for 12 seconds okay and acceleration is constant okay so acceleration equal to constant and then moves with constant velocity constant speed for 30 seconds okay that means from here to here from 12 to 42 that makes it for 30 seconds uh, it is constant speed that means acceleration is zero before decelerating uniformly to rest in further six seconds so 42 plus 6 48 seconds so in these six seconds acceleration is negative okay the total distance traveled okay from here to here the distance is 585 meters find the constant speed of the bus constant speed means they want to ask what is the speed here since they have given the distance traveled 585 meters and it is not turning back a graph will be a good way of finding that v this v okay so let's draw a vt diagram so first it start from zero then it accelerates at some rate let's write something okay now it reaches v which we want to find out then it goes constant speed at that same v and then decelerates in six seconds so this time is 42 this time is 12 so total distance will be the area under this curve and area of under this curve will be the area of the trapezium that shape is here so let's find the area of the trapezium which will be distance so 585 which is the distance will be the area of the trapezium for that we need first parallel line which is this from 12 to 42 which is 30 plus second parallel line which is whole of it up to 48 and multiplied by the distance between the two parallel lines which is v that's what we want to find out and we can find it easily now let's cross multiply this 585 times 2 divided by 30 and 4078 that will be v let me use my calculator and uh, when i use it i get v equal to 15 meters per second move on to the next part of the same question which says find the magnitude of deceleration so if we want to find the magnitude of deceleration which is this part for that we need to know the gradient of this line for that if i know the coordinates of this point and this point i can find gradient easily and now we know the, what are the coordinates of this the t coordinate is 42 v coordinate we just found out 15 and here 48 and 0 and now we can find its gradient so acceleration rather deacceleration right deceleration equal to uh, 15 minus 0 over 42 minus 48 obviously we'll get a negative answer but it's okay because they're saying it's a deceleration we'll give a positive answer because the word deceleration is being used so 42 minus 48 will be minus 6 and the answer will be minus 2.5 the deceleration is 2.5 meters per second square question 2 two small smooth spheres a and b of equal radii okay radius is same for both and of masses km kg and mkg that means this is and this is km kilograms so this is multiplying by some number and they don't have same mass that's what they're trying to say where k is greater than one greater than one means this one will be heavier because k is 
more than one, its mass will become more than the mass of sphere B. That means it is more dense because their size is same, but it is more dense. Okay. <clears throat> A is moving towards B with 6 meters per second. And B is moving towards A with a speed of 2 meters per second. So it will be minus 2 meters per second since velocity is a vector in opposite direction. It will be minus 2 meters per second. After collision, A and B coalesce. Okay, they become one body and move with 4 meters per second, find K. All right. So according to the conservation of momentum, it will be M1, U1 plus M2, U2 equal to M1 plus M2, V. So M1, U1, M, the mass of the first one is Km. So we write Km. U1 is 6 meters per second plus M2 is just M, but its velocity is minus 2 meters per second equal to M1 plus M2, Km plus m and v is the final velocity so let's do what uh, let's take m common out of this so it becomes m k plus 1 v and this becomes 6 k m plus rather minus 2 m since all of them have m multiplying with them we can divide all of them by m to get rid of m so m gets cancelled out okay so 6k minus 2 equal to k plus 1 oh v is known to us it is 4 meters per second and which direction they have given they have not given any direction of this but since it is faster and heavier, common sense says that they together they will move in this direction, positive direction. So we'll take 4 as V. So now it is an equation in terms of K only. So it will be easy for us to answer this now. 6K minus 4K equal to 4 plus 2. 2K equal to 6 and K equal to 6 over 2 which is 3 so now let's move on to the next part of the same question it is fine in terms of m the loss of kinetic energy all right so first we should know what was the kinetic energy initially initial of the two bodies two spheres the first one will be half mv square m in this case is now km for the first sphere and k we found as 3 so we will write 3m and v square the velocity was 6 and the kinetic energy of the second sphere will be uh, the mass is just m but speed was minus 2 you write minus 2 or not doesn't matter because energy is not a vector so it is not going to uh, reduce or uh, something it will add all the way we are adding the individual kinetic energy of the two so let's expand this it will become half times 3m times 36 plus half times m times 4 so minus already this square made it 4 so 2 and 36 are 18 18 times 3 54m plus this cancels 2m so answer is 56m initially now kinetic energy final will be half and now m will be 3m plus m that is the total mass of the two bodies and their speed was 4 so square that one it becomes half 4m times 16 so this and this cancel it becomes 32m so the loss of kinetic energy which is delta ke will be kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial which is 32 minus m minus 56 m 
and that is minus 24 m so as we are using the word loss there is no need to write negative so we can write loss in kinetic energy equal to 24 m joules all right let's move on to the next one there are coplanar forces of 24 newton p newton 20 newton and 36 newtons okay and their direction have been given in this picture given that sine alpha is three three fifths find the values of p and theta so obviously sine alpha has been given we will definitely need cos alpha as well so let me draw a right angle triangle to find cos alpha so sine alpha sine is opposite if this is alpha opposite to this will be 3 opposite over hypotenuse this will be 5 and now we can use Pythagorean theorem to find the adjacent side which will be used for cos so 3 square uh, rather 5 square minus 3 square square root this is how we use to find this side right now which will be 4 so adjacent side is 4 now and we are all set to use sine and cos alpha all right now the components in x direction and y direction will be written the component of 24 newton in this direction will be 24 cos alpha because alpha is with this vertical component that's why plus we will have the vertical component of p in this direction as well p cos theta because theta is with again with the vertical component so the opposite ones will be sine 20 newton is already here here will be p sine theta here it will be 24 sine alpha okay 36 newton is also there and alpha angle is here same angle so 36 cos alpha and here it will be 36 sine alpha alpha has been given as this so we can use sine alpha and cos alpha with the help of this triangle here and uh, they're also saying that the system is in equilibrium so we have to show that the resultant in x direction which is the horizontal direction is zero if resultant is zero that means this, the forces on the left side will be equal to the forces on the right side so let's do that 24 sine alpha plus 36 sine alpha equal to 20 newton plus p sine theta on the right then only the x resultant will be zero okay both have sine alpha so let's substitute sine alpha sine alpha was given as 3 fifth so 24 times 3 fifth plus 36 times 3 fifth equal to 20 plus p sine alpha both unknown to us so we can uh, evaluate this uh, 5 does not divide anyone but let's do it in decimals 4.8 okay this will be 7.2 so 3 is common in both so we can use distributive property 4.8 i'm doing it mentally you can just straight away use your calculator don't go into these details if there is a problem in understanding i will bring 20 also to the left side and p sine theta left here okay 4.8 plus 7.2 is 12 12 times 3 is 36 minus 20 equal to p sine theta 16 equal to p sine theta this is our equation number one now vertical will give us another equation of p causal cos theta because that is one unknown here so r in y direction is also zero because of equilibrium so the forces up will be equal to forces down p cos theta 24 cos alpha p cos theta plus 24 cos alpha equal to the downward force which is 36 cos alpha okay so p cos theta is unknown so let's write it as it is plus 24 
cos alpha. Cos alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse 4 over 5 equal to 36 cos alpha. Same 36 times 4 over 5. So since we these two are evaluated, let's bring them to the right side. So P cos theta equal to uh, 36 4 over 5 minus 24 4 over 5. We can use distributive property again. Let me not cancel this time. So it will be 4 over 5 common and we'll be having here 36 minus 24 equal to P cos theta. 36 minus 24 will be 12 times 4 over 5. Now we can cancel this. This is 2.4. 2.4 times 4 is 9.6. So cos theta of P will be equal to 9.6. And now we have both the equation. This is equation number 2. So let's continue here. We'll divide equation 1 by equation 2. And why? Because it has sine theta, this has cos theta, sine theta over cos theta, tan theta. So they will become one term. So it will be better to divide 1 by 2. So P sine theta over P cos theta equal to P sine theta is 16, right? Over here we got 9.6. So P and P cancel. That was the purpose of dividing. So we are left with tan theta equal to 16 over 9.6. Theta equal to tan inverse 16 over 9.6. And let me use the calculator to find the same. By the time I do it, I request you to subscribe to this channel, hit the bell icon to get notification about new uploads and like and share this video. It will motivate me to make more such videos first of all. And by using my calculator tan inverse 16.9.6 is 59.03 and let's use 59 degrees only. Now. Only challenge left now to find P. There is a smarter way of finding P, which is, uh, let's square this one, which is P square cos square theta equal to 9.6 square. Similarly, square the equation one, which was P sine theta equal to 16. Add the both. So I will write P square sine square theta equal to 16 square and then add add left to the left right to the right so p square cos square theta i'm not using the angle i got plus p square sine square theta equal to 9.6 square plus 16 square right now we can take p square common from this so we are left with cos square theta plus sine square theta in brackets and Let's leave it at 9.6 square plus 16 square. Cos square theta plus sine square theta is 1. So we are left with just P square equal to 9.6 square plus 16 square. To find P, we can square both sides now. So P will be square root of this. When we square root this, we get 18.7 newtons.